Hi, it's Sandra here from Create in Spain and today I want to do a video because one of my viewers uh, suggested that I might like to come up with an alternative for oxidizing distress inks. So here we go. I've got some pieces of card that I've just cut into small sample sizes. I have a stamp to use, which is just a cheapy silicon stamp. I have and this is probably the only branded thing um, from the craft world that I have. And this is a couple of Tim Holtz um, blending tools. I have a small bottle, which I have put some glycerin into. I have a water spray bottle and I have some paints. Now I have two different sorts of paints here. And as it happens, I got them in two different colors, but the reason for that will become obvious later on. I've got some acrylic paints. Now acrylics can be used in a very similar way to watercolors, but they have one particular property which I think might be useful in this particular case. And that is once an acrylic has dried, water does not affect it. You can't do what you can do with normal uh, watercolors, which is lift color off afterwards. And the other two I have are tubes of watercolor paint. Okay. Now, having looked at a couple of videos on what happens with the um, distress oxidizing inks or whatever you like to call them, I decided that the way to go forward was probably with these two different sorts of paints because of their different properties. Watercolour will run and the acrylic will not. Also, the acrylic will show up on dark surfaces and the watercolour will not. Now, in case you're wondering, um, in case you get a little confused on doing this, I have covered part of my worktop with a sheet of sticky back plastic. So I'm not putting any paint directly onto my worktop. Honestly, I'm not. I'm putting it onto plastic and then I can just wipe it off the plastic. I just thought I'd try this uh, instead of my usual glass tile and see how it worked. And if it works really well, then I might coat the entire desk in it and just every couple of months, whatever, peel it off and re-stick some fresh down. So, yes, it's not going directly onto my table. Please don't do that because you'll make a right mess of your table. I'm going to have to change that one for a different one. All right, this is cad cadmium yellow. Now, normally, uh, what I do when I open a thing for the first time, I put some Vaseline around here, which generally means that I can open it when I've left it for a long while. Obviously, the other tube hadn't had that treatment on it. Right, so here's a little bit of watercolour paint. I'm just going to stand up just to check that you can actually see that. Yeah, I think you can. Okay, it's in view. And now I'm going to get some of an acrylic yellow. And it's going to be more or less a 50-50 split between the two. Okay. And I'm just going to start off with the yellow. This is the first colour I'm going to use. I'll get round to the red later on. And I'm just going to use one of these tools here to mix the paint up. Now, you may or you may not need to add a touch of glycerine. This will depend on how stiff your paints are or indeed whether you want a prolonged drying time. If you want a prolonged drying time, add a little drop of glycerin. If you don't and your paint's the right consistency, then don't worry about it. So I'm just going to mix this up and put it onto my blending tool as I would normally. And here's a scrap of card. Now, as you can see, this goes on so easily and you get lovely, vibrant colour. If I do the same thing on a piece of blue, you will still get a reasonable amount of colour. And that is something that you would not get if you were just using a watercolour or water-based type ink. Okay, so you can see you will still get coverage there on the dark surface. Now, we want to test out the properties. 
And I wanted to do while I've still got this here on my stamp, I'm going to use this as a stamp pad. I see no reason why not. Because if I'm not going to actually make stamp pads up, and I wouldn't do that for this, then I need some way of getting it on to stamps, don't I? So put that there. And I'm just going to stamp my image on here. Well, that's come out pretty well. And I'll do one on the blue as well, just to, just because I can really. It may not stamp really well on this because this mat isn't actually flat. It's got circular impressions underneath. And I wasn't thinking of that when I got it out. So, And you may well be able to see that on there. This is a particularly fine line stamp, so you won't see too much detail coming through on the dark surface. You can probably see a bit more on the white. Now, one thing to remember is if you have acrylic paint on here, you really don't want to let it dry. So all I'm going to do is take that off and plop it in a cup of water for the time being while I'm working. Okay. If I wasn't doing a demonstration, I would just go straight into the bathroom and wash it off. But I am. So there we go. Okay. So that's the first bit. Okay, start again. Got some watercolour paper. So let's do a little of the colouring. I just refreshed the amount of paint I had on my surface there. So we've got that nice and evenly spread. And if I do the droplet technique, hopefully we will see that colour comes off. like so, which it does, okay? Now, if I spray this with plenty of water, you should be able to see that if, for example, I'm moving things around, some of the color moves and some of it, oops, got hair on there, where did that come from? and some of it does not and that's because the acrylic is not so likely to move around as the watercolor is so that's quite an interesting effect to get i'm just going to get a wet cloth and clean off that there dry that a bit so that's that one. This one here is now pretty dry. So let's see how water affects that. Use splashes of water. And if I dry that off, can see you get the oxidizing effect so it changes the color so that is something that the oxidizing distress inks do and this does it as well so that's another quality that it has in common with the oxidizing distress if I move these to one side and I do another couple of strips of the yellow, for example, put that in here and that on that end. Let's wipe, whoops, get my wet cloth, wipe my surface off. Now I'm going to mix up some red. So again, it is a watercolour and an acrylic red. Oops, that one's not even open. Okay, there we go. Oops, <laughs> getting a load of gunk out of there. A lot of the, um, what do you call it, the um, mixing 
element there. Okay, that's coming out really runny, which is most unusual. Usually the watercolours come out quite stiff, but they separated in two. Right, so I won't have to add any glycerin to that one. It's going to be wet enough already. And some of my acrylic. And take my other blending tool. And shall come back in with the yellow one so you can see what will happen if I put this colour over the top. So it does actually cover it reasonably well. Okay. And if I do this over the yellow, oh, that is gorgeous. There we go. You can see that blends really nicely. Now, if I drop some water on here, like so. And the other end, I'm going to dry before I put water on it and let's see if there's any difference. Okay, so that's had a few seconds to so you basically get the effect where you can still see the underneath colour and you get the holes in the colour on the top, which is brilliant. And on this one, I'm going to go over this one with the red and then I'm going to dry the red on top of that as well. Dry that off. Now, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it's a more subtle effect. So some of the colour has been removed and some of it has not because it was dried in between whilst. And the only bit that will be removed if you dry it in between is the watercolour part. The acrylic part of it will stay in place. So that, as far as I'm concerned, is pretty good. I quite like that. And I'm just going to fish out my stamp from here and dry it off a bit. My stamp. Now, let me see what I want to try. Okay, I'm going to colour in a nice... big area here. I think I'm going to put some yellow in that as well. Let's have a look, see what that does. Yeah, a little bit of a yellow tinge. Why not? And I need to mix up a little more yellow because I haven't got enough, I don't think, on my blending tool to ink up my stamp very well. So a bit more of the yellow mix here. Now bear in mind the more acrylic you've got in this mix the better it's going to show on a darker surface. Okay. Stamp that down. And apart from that, it is very fine lines. Yes, that has actually made a viewable image on top of the darker colour. Okay. I'm going to mist that. There we go. And 
when you wet it and then you dry it, you get this chalkier looking effect. Okay, so for my money, if I wanted to do any special effects, I think this works out pretty well. It's certainly fun. I've already got the colours, so it's not going to cost me anything. And I can get some really, really vibrant coloured backgrounds and do some fun effects on that. I'm not overly keen on chalk effects, particularly. Um, I would prefer to just have the bright colours and, and not a chalky effect. But that's just my personal taste. Okay, thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful. Take care now. Bye-bye.